All right, so just a little bit about payment and permission. I don't need you to memorize all this. Probably don't need to spend a lot of time on this. But when you sample someone's work, right, someone's music, it's almost always going to be derivative. It's very, very, incredibly, rarely, rarely, ever, ever, ever going to be fair use. And we'll go over an example of fair use, which involves um, my favorite, Drake. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's almost always a derivative use. You're almost always exploiting what you're sampling for whatever reason, how it sounds, um, the aesthetics of it, what it, what, what's said um, or not, you know, whatever. Um, so just so you know, you pay a mechanical royalty fee. Um, this is paid to a record label and you have to obtain a master use license. This is to use the sound recording. Okay. Um, like I said, how this works. So you need a mechanical, you pay a mechanical royalty fee and need a master use license. So you get the master use and you pay a mechanical. Um, and this is a percentage based upon sales. Now, how most of these licensing agreements work out work out for sampling um, is that there's an, a made up upfront fee and this often depends on how much the record label values the song how popular it was etc etc could be 10 grand it could be 100 grand it also could depend on who you are you know they're gonna ask Kanye to pay a lot more than me um, okay so like you 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 pay an add up ad hoc f upfront fee and then you pay um, running royalties based on sales or streams you so you pay a percentage of 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 um you know the mechanical um royalties that you're paid okay then you pay a publishing royalty fee um, which is called a and then and obtain a mechanical license so you need a mechanical license right and you pay a publishing royalty fee this is for the publishing rights the compositions and lyrics in the sound recording um that you use that you used okay and so basically what happens is um the publishing company that represents the lyricists and songwriters and composers that you s sampled in a sound recording they get a percentage of your publishing royalties so your radio plays your streams your syncs whatever it is they get a percentage of that it could be 25 percent or it could be a hundred percent if you look at a song like rapper's delight one of the you know the first uh major rap song you know you look at who's listed as song song uh, writer of that. It's N. Rogers. That's Niles Rogers of Chic. Chic wrote Good Times, which came out a couple months before, and you know, uh, Sugar Hill Records basically replayed the main loop in its entirety of the Chic song. So that's really, really, uh, really important there. Um, uh, and so he gets 100 percent of the sound of the, of the songwriting credit. You know, he gets all of the publishing on that. So again, you have to think about this. Like, what is a transformative use when it comes to, you know, sampling? There's no argument for like I sampled a country song or a rock song and a rap song, and that is transformative. Like, yeah, it's a different genre. It's probably a dem different demographic of of, cons of consumers. But it's really hard for you to say that you're you're creating new meaning and new new expression. It's really hard for you to say that like, your use is your use is fair. You're using it for the typically for the same purposes. Um, it's really hard for you to get that. But if you were had a very transformative use, you could probably argue fair use in, in court. But it would have to be highly transformative. Okay, um, you know. You have to think too, like derivative. A derivative equates to a translation or an adaptation. Um, so you use an original work and build upon it. That tends to be where 99.9999999% of music sampling ends ends up is right is right there in deriv in derivative. Okay, um, you know as we know, there's different types of sampling, right, which are highly derivative, like. Coolio, MC Hammer, Puffy, Diddy, Daddy, Duty, and then like other artists like LP or DJ Premier or whoever who really try to mask what they use and break it down. 
Okay, but in most legal senses, uh, sampling is almost always going to be derivative. It's almost always going to be exploitative. Who gets paid from sampling? Just know in general, like basically a record label gets paid, okay? Re recording artists who who are represented by the record label gets paid and it de it depends. They may get 50% of the royalties, they may get 40, 30, but they do get a large percent, a pretty good percentage actually of, of the royalties uh, for, for sampling. Um, you know, but they also have to have recouped, they also have to have paid back their advance to the record label. Um, publishing, publishing companies own, own the publishing, get paid. Songwriters get paid, and it's usually, again, about a 50-50, so that's where you'd see an MFN license, where, you know, um, all royalties collected for a song, you know, a composition that's been sampled in a sound recording, the publishing company will take half, and then they'll pay the other half to all of whoever the songwriters are. Um, so anybody who's an author gets paid and then you have all the lawyers they get paid um, the sample clearance companies there's like third-party sample clearance companies um, publishing rights organizations trolls they all get paid but a lot of times the artists don't get paid it's just kind of like the the wackiness of it but it really all depends on contracts <laughs>